Oh, good day. Ken here, Ken Sobbies. Welcome to my channel. Well, I'm trying to get the intake manifold on this thing and the heater balance of the heater hoses and get this thing running again. Uh, where to begin? Begin with the heater hoses when looking at this. I said I found some hose clamps. I have them in my pocket here. We'll just dig them out. <laughs> this for a bit. Oh, I had a little interruption there. But anyway, let's get back to this here. As usual, I've got the wrong glasses on. I'm getting a glare from the sun in my eyes. putting this clamp so that if we ever have to get it off again I don't have to take the damn top piece off again I can use the ratchet and socket for this top one same with this laid out where it's easier to get at in the future First one. Now, to figure this one out, we would have to. Let's uh, see, that was the reason why. Right that way. That way would be better. That way has to be this way. 
Now I'll have to look at my other video when I took it off. As to which way it was. I'm pretty sure it was this way. Yeah, I think that's lining up there because there's the rubber at the top, so that sits there. Okay, let's get the fuel injectors hooked up. This is the harness for it. I think this looks like it was underneath. Clean that manifold off, and I have to pause my video here to study the when I disassembled this because so much you know, I remember so many vacuum hoses, wiring connections. Well, the wiring connections are easy to figure out, but all the vacuum hoses, uh, I gotta refresh my own memory here. So, pause it at this point. Let me interrupt this. Uh video for a bit. I want to talk a little bit more about my channel. Casey Liddell explains how it worked. YouTube works very well. So I'm posting some of his clips of what he said. Absolutely nothing. I mean, seriously, it does not matter. Now that's of course, long story short. In reality, the subscribers themselves do matter. And the act of subscribing matters. But that total subscriber number completely worthless kind of yeah i hit 200,000 subscribers a month or two months ago something like that and uh there's a lot of comments a lot of congratulations and i appreciate that but it, it's not doesn't really mean anything in the in the grand scheme of things and there's also a lot of people thinking man you're gonna make the big bucks now and stuff like that and think it jumps you up some other level in the youtube world and it just doesn't but we're gonna go over what it does mean and uh why it doesn't matter all at the same time. Okay, as far as the 200,000 thing and pay, which is what people are most interested in, no, you don't get paid any more at all. Uh, your pay is not based off of subscribers. It, you can have 5 million subscribers. If you don't get views, you won't get paid. You get paid off of views and watch time. Those are what determine your pay and your pay rate, as well as what time of year it is and stuff like that, because there's high seasons and low seasons for advertisers, which means their advertising rates or advertising space in our channels are more valuable or less valuable. So no, 200,000 means absolutely nothing when it comes to pay. As for subscribers, when I was being asking for a minimum of 500, well, here's the first step. Of YouTube I'll post a clip here I've taken a screenshot of the regulation there for the subscribers also just the algorithm itself doesn't use that subscriber number in any part of its calculations check cheap as far as what videos it's gonna push out or anything like that whether or not your videos get pushed um, a lot of people think that the more subscribers you have, the more the algorithm pushes your videos out, and that's not true. The algorithm doesn't care how many subscribers you have. Uh, if it sees a good video that people want to watch, it's going to push it no matter what. If it sees a bad video that nobody wants to watch, it's going to hold it back no matter what. That's just how the algorithm works. The subscriber number is not taken into account in that at all. But before that happens, what he just said there is the big reason I need that 500 subscribers before that step even takes place. So anyway, back to the algorithm. So how the algorithm decides whether or not it's going to push out a video is not the number of subscribers a creator has. It's the quality of the video and the audience reaction to it. Basically what that means is if people like the video, it's going to send it out to more people. If people don't like the video, it's going to hold it back. But I think there's some more involved in that that YouTube's not telling people, but it makes sense in my head and we'll get to that a little later. Here again as you hear about comments and likes well that's the reason i say several times do like subscribe and share and out of the comments i've had now this will be my 110th video and with just over being a year hardly any comments the odd few 
So now, audience engagement is what the algorithm looks for in whether a video is good or she should be pushed out or not. See, the algorithm can't watch a video and go like, that's a good video. People are going to want to watch this. But they can look at analytics and metrics in those analytics to make that determination. First one, watch time. And this is where there's kind of a contradiction in what they say uh, the algorithm's looking for and what I'm seeing in the, the actual analytics, but that's for later. Second one, likes. People click and like on the video. Third one, and this is a very big one, and that is comments. So I get a lot of people telling me like, oh, don't don't listen to the haters and don't, don't even respond to them, they're not worth it. Dude, those are the best comments I got. Those haters are gonna watch every minute of every video I put out, and that just adds to my watch time, which increases my pay rate, and they're gonna comment on every video and talk smack about it, and those comments count towards engagement in the algorithm. So this half, at this point, tells me just about everything. I'll continue. And a lot of times they say something stupid and other people respond to it and those comments count as well. So now that one comment is worth twice as much as it would have been, which is why I pin a lot of those stupid ass comments and then put some snarky reply to it. And then a whole bunch of people go back and forth on it. What I did right there was I turned one comment into 50 or 100 comments and the algorithm sees all those in that comment count. So yes, it's a very strategic thing I do and I'm doing it on purpose and I'm using the haters to increase the amount of money that goes in my pocket. So, for those of you who like to talk smack about things I do, thank you, I love it. Now, another one that shows audience engagement is shares. Anyway, uh, shares, that's audience engagement. The algorithm thinks that people are sharing this video, people like this video. Also, the number of subscribers you have doesn't mean that's how many views you're gonna automatically get on a video. As you can see right here, this is like a channel average. 52% uh, of my viewers are not subscribed, meaning the majority of the people who watch my channel aren't subscribed to it, and the majority of the people subscribed to it aren't watching it. So no, there's no correlation between subscriber number and viewer number. The algorithm just really doesn't care. Anyway, here's another reason that subscriber number doesn't matter. YouTube shorts. Now it's not 100% accurate to say that the subscriber number doesn't matter on YouTube. Um, there are a few milestones in the subscriber numbers that do mean something. One, you have to have a thousand subscribers to be monetized. So that means something. At 100,000, you get your silver play button. That's it, nothing else changes. Uh, somewhere over 100,000 in a certain performance category in your monetization, not necessarily in your subscriber number, but in your monetization, uh, YouTube reaches out to you with a YouTube partner manager. Now you see, YouTube is a partnership between the creator and YouTube. YouTube sells advertising space on the videos that the creator makes. We as the creators get a percentage of whatever YouTube is able to sell the ad space for, and then YouTube gets the rest. I, I'm not sure if this is 100% correct with everybody, but I believe I get 58% of whatever that number is, and YouTube gets 42 for mine specifically. I'm not sure if that's like the same across the board or if that's even where mine is now or whatever, but I think that's what it is. Either way, what it means is the better we do, the more money YouTube makes. So YouTube wants us to do really good, make good videos, do things that make us more money because that's how YouTube makes money as well. So they reached out to me a while ago and assigned me a partner manager. This is a specific representative at YouTube who works with me and my channel's analytics and all that stuff to uh, try to maximize the amount of money I'm making off of YouTube. Problem is, I've pretty much not done a single thing that he's told me to do. So, with what you just heard there is why I said in my last video that this might just be my last video until I see those numbers come up. Now that you've heard that and him also saying about the like or dislike of the video itself well, I have to say this. Yes, I'll admit, I don't, I'm not the best at taking, number one, the footage of what I'm doing. Number two, no camera person to follow, or follow me around. Number three, I gotta do my own editing. That takes time. And it's taking more of my time editing than doing the stuff. Number four, my age. I can't be as fast as I used to. Even 20 years ago, I know myself. 
I have slowed down drastically. So I can't be no Speedy Gonzales. Those days are over for me. And I have to admit it, as much as I don't like to. Come to subscribers. I want to thank all 61 subscribers. And here's another thing about I can't figure out about YouTube. Two days ago, I had 62 subscribers. Somebody said there. The following day, back down to 61. Well, that was my first clue. My second clue in testing to what you just heard Casey saying about videos is my last video was a very, very good example about my channel and its contents and YouTube pushing the channel. Yesterday marked a very, very special occasion here in the province of British Columbia. So I made a clip to honor it. Let's see, how should I put this? Uh, because I couldn't be there is why I made the clip. Now, the event was held live stream. Little Coast Cory, I think, is the name of the channel. Uh, Corey, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in Victoria, B.C., was there, so, and she managed to capture its final landing coming into, towards the museum at, uh, Saanich. Why this had my interest in so drastically was when I was in Victoria, I was well, on a job, and the place where I had a job uh, was only a couple of miles from the airport in Saanich. So it had meaning to me as well, in a sense. That is the reason there. But, in 24 hours, here is the example that told me the final step. The live stream video has had over 127,000 views. Her video has over thousands of views. The video I made, three views in just a few hours. What does that tell you. My channel is disliked. Fine. This video will be my last video. Unless, as I said before, I see those numbers come up. Number one. Number two, I get a camera person. Number three, I get a better camera. Number four, somebody else to do my editing. I know I haven't got the best one of the balance of putting this manifold back together and getting my car running again. So, I will be deleting 99% of the video, just showing a couple of if I possibly can show in a couple of the highlights. Once again, I would like to thank all those 61 subscribers. I do appreciate it. You helped me, but that 500 is a long way to go. And at the rate it's going, for that first 500 before that I could add any merchandise or anything when I continue reading and that's why I showed the minimum. You heard Casey say there about 1,000 subscribers. 
Well, it was just shortly after that that they reduced it for me to 500, as you've seen in the post that I put on. Like I said, I'm 75 years old, and it, uh, with only 61 subscribers at this point, before the monetizing can happen, and the views as you saw in that chart, and to what Casey's just finishes explaining here, and I'm not finished with it, there's a little bit more yet, I do believe, coming up, is what made my final decision. Anyway, uh, the partner manager, yeah, I've, I've, all the advice he's given me, the things he's told me to do, I've done pretty much none of it. Uh, because a lot of it is like, they want me to do YouTube uh, channel memberships, uh, where you, you pay, kind of like Patreon, but on YouTube, where you pay for extra uh, perks, extra videos, extra stuff like that. But as you guys know, I don't do any of that. I do the Patreon thing where we give that money a way like use it to help people, not for me, it's for other people. And he pushed me, hey, bring that whole, we like what you're doing with that, that's great. Bring that whole idea out of Patreon, back over to YouTube, that way it's all 100% on the YouTube platform. It's easier for the viewers of uh, your account's already on YouTube. If you wanna be part of that membership to be part of that program to help others, it's all on YouTube, they don't have to go to a separate platform. And I told them, cool, I will do that as soon as YouTube matches Patreon's percentage. You see, Patreon takes 8% of all the money that's uh, given through Patreon. YouTube takes 30%. So, YouTube, if you're watching, just like I told your partner manager dude, match Patreon's percentage and I'll bring that whole program back over to YouTube platform. But until then, we're using that money to help others, so the more of it we can keep to help other people, we're gonna stay over on Patreon. So, as I was saying, wow, uh, last time we were here, I should probably shut this truck off now. Um, another thing the YouTube partner manager really pushed me to do, take a break truck, take a break, is uh, YouTube shorts. Like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of shorts on YouTube. I think that should be for like TikTok, but I don't do TikTok hardly ever, ever. So yeah, they're really, really pushing shorts and he's right in that shorts work. They really do work and they are a way to grow your channel. What I wish YouTube would do would be to separate the analytics from shorts and long form videos. There are two different categories on the platform, but the analytics all get lumped together and that vastly skews your numbers. For example, Edison Motors. A lot of people come in and ask if I've been following what the guys at Edison Motors up here in North America, Canada are doing. And yes, I have. And yes, I am a massive fan of what they're doing. And I want one really, really bad. I'm going to use them as an example because their analytics are easy to see. So if you go to their YouTube channel here and uh, go to videos, they have 233,000 subscribers. Really good. Uh, but their videos are 2,900 views, 12,000, 7,600, 10,000, 8,400, 31, 29, 141, that's good, 17. So they're doing good, but uh, for 233,000 subscribers, that's not a lot of views per video. But now if we flip over here to, to Social Blade, where we can see how many monthly views they're getting, 40, damn near 40 million monthly views. Um, that's a lot. Now let's go look at mine. See, I get 41,000 as a video post this morning. 141, 103, 160, 90, 140, 277, 123, 187. Yeah, a lot more views per video. I have 205,000 subscribers. And we have, uh, there it is, two point, almost 2.5 million views per month which is really low for me. I'm normally in the 4.5 to 5 million view per month range, but this is my slowest time of the year as far as videos. This end of summer, right before we get back into winter, it's always the big dip in the channel, so that's normal. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm getting vastly more views per video, putting out more videos than they are per week and per month, but getting just a tiny fraction of the monthly views they are. How is that possible? YouTube Shorts. Because YouTube doesn't split the analytics up between shorts and long form videos, even though it puts them out as two different categories on the platform, shorts get vast numbers of views very quickly and it throws off all the actual channel analytics and makes it look like that channel's getting far bigger actual video views than they really are. Like I said, this is nothing against Edison. I think the guys are doing a great job. I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. I do want to go up there and see what they're doing in person, check out that truck, do a whole video on it. 
we're gonna make that happen. In the analytics side of YouTube, it does show how much YouTube Shorts completely skews all the numbers and makes that subscriber number versus the view number and all that totally just kind of pointless. I also know of another channel that's got 300 something thousand subscribers and whenever that channel puts out a video, um, it gets like a thousand views, 1500 views, less than 2000 views almost every time because nobody actually wants to watch that channel. But uh, because of what they do on YouTube Shorts, they get a bunch of big view numbers and uh, subscribers because YouTube Shorts makes it really easy to subscribe. So I'm not gonna name that channel because it's one of the most annoying people I've ever seen on the internet. So just, yeah, it shows how bad the numbers are. Now, where the subscriber number does make a difference is in sponsorships. Um, a lot of people are able to get bigger dollar value sponsorships and uh, more of them based on bigger subscriber numbers because there's a lot of advertisers who don't understand that big subscriber number doesn't mean big view number. So they see a lot of value in a big subscriber number and are willing to pay a lot and give a lot in a uh, sponsorship to a channel that has that big, cool looking subscriber number. Now the problem with that is uh, I don't do many sponsored videos. And when I do, I get absolutely ripped apart in the comments section for it. And I don't understand why, this makes no sense to me. I have 650, over 650 videos on this channel. Less than 10 of them are sponsored. And yet, if I do a sponsored video, I get just blasted as the most money hungry, greedy sellout ever out there for doing a sponsored video and trying to make a buck out of this deal. But many other channels like Heavy D, Cletus McFarland, pretty much every big YouTube channel out there, name one, they're all heavily sponsored, heavily corporate big money sponsored. But at the same time, people think it's so cool, all this big, badass, awesome stuff they're doing with helicopters and airplanes and buying racetracks and everything else. Where do you think that money comes from? Because allow me to let you in on a little secret. Uh, you don't make big money off of YouTube's ad revenue. You make big money off of sponsorships. That's what's paying for all that big money stuff you're seeing and loving so much on those channels. Now again, this isn't me saying anything bad about those guys or they're doing something so wrong or so bad or anything like that. These are guys who are far more successful than I am and uh, good for them, like awesome. I'm just pointing out the irony in the fact that if I do any sort of sponsored video. Now, as he's talking about sponsorship, so far I've only had one that was willing to sponsor me. Not a hundred percent, but he gave me permission to advertise for him. Uh, where'd I put that card now? Don't tell me I lost it. I had it sitting on my computer all along. Now I go to get it, and it's not there. Anyway, it was Mark's Marine. Because of my book project, Mark's Marine, was willing to assist me there and I only did one partial commercial on one video that I have done yet in regards with my boat project. Showed the product it was to do with the uh, styrofoam that's in the boat. But before I can really get any of the sponsorship, that's where that 500 subscribers are needed. As you heard Casey say, they look at sponsor or uh, subscribers before they're willing to sponsor. Every once in a while, uh, I just get shredded over as this money hungry, greedy sellout. Yeah, a lot of people think that just posting on YouTube and the money YouTube pays you is how you become a millionaire and rich and all that stuff, and it, it's not. It, it, YouTube can pay the bills, sponsorship is where you make money. Uh, all the big money stuff you see comes from sponsorships, not from YouTube ad revenue. But at the same time, uh, a lot of those sponsors are basing how much they're giving in a sponsorship and what the value of it is 
off of that subscriber number and those monthly view numbers, which is where those numbers do actually matter. But that's also where YouTube Shorts heavily inflates those numbers and allows channels to get much bigger sponsorships than they probably should based on the actual video views they get. But again, good for them. Profit is not a sin. Making money is a good thing as long as you're not doing bad things to make it. Uh, if they're making good money doing that, like I'm happy for them, I should probably take lessons. Now on the topic of sponsorships, yes, I, I hardly ever do sponsorships. I, I'm not a fan of them uh, in general, but they do help. And I've, I'm turning kind of my thought process on that because I'm realizing that, and the Patreon thing helped me realize that, of the more money this channel makes, the more uh, I can do for other people. And a big point of this whole channel is to help others. And if I am limiting how much I'm making and bringing in, I'm limiting how much I can help other people as well, which is kind of preventing me from my goal of helping more people. So that coupled with uh, doing that whole truckercalculator.com thing and realizing that how much money these trucks lose because of what I do with YouTube, um, just so I want to help people. So yeah, I, I see where the sponsorships could allow me to do a lot more of what I truly love doing with this whole YouTube channel thing. A lot of them are so far out and not even remotely related to like this channel that they don't really count. Like I'm talking like women's clothing line wants to sponsor my channel. No, we're not doing that. But um, what I've gotten in offers and the type of companies that are reaching out is increasing dramatically once I cross about 200 uh, mark I think they can filter when they when they search for channels to sponsor. They, they can filter by subscriber number, and that's what they do. So that's where that number matters. And if we were doing more sponsorships, yes, it would be very important. But if we're not, it's not, so. Okay, quick cut in here with my cell phone because I'm editing this video and I realized I forgot to say something that I said I would say later in the video, so I'm putting it in now. But something I've noticed in my analytics is if you were to rank my videos from highest to lowest, and then rank my videos in watch time percentage from lowest to highest, they would match up perfectly. So my highest viewed video, 1.5 million views, has the lowest percentage of watch time. It goes down the list like that until you get to like some of my lowest viewed videos have the highest percentage of watch time. And I know some people say that's because more people watched it, so that's more people cut out early, it throws a percentage off, but I think something different's going on. You see, YouTube's goal is to make money. End of story, that's it. And how do they make money? by selling advertisements on videos. And what happens every time a video starts playing? An ad plays. So if I make a five minute video and you watch the entire thing from beginning to end, you watched five minutes of YouTube and saw one ad because five minute videos don't have mineral ads. You have to be eight minutes or longer and whatever. But if I made that five minute video and you watched one minute of it and then went and watched another video and watched one minute of it and then watched another video, only one minute of it for five minutes, in that same five minutes, you saw five ads. Now, whether those are my videos you watched or not, YouTube made five times as much money off that same five minutes of viewing time from you than if you watched one five minute video all the way through. So my theory is that YouTube really likes videos that people short watch, but stay on YouTube watching other videos. Now, if you short watch a video and then leave the YouTube platform, YouTube absolutely hates you because they're like, hey, this person's making people leave YouTube, not cool. But if you short watch them and stay on the YouTube platform, YouTube loves you because that's just that many more ads they're able to put in front of your face, charge for it and make money off of. And that's how I think it works. Either way, uh, I got more work to do on this, so I'm gonna do that, and we will see you guys in the next one. Uh, like this video if you haven't subscribed. All of the, the things you're, you, that they tell you to do. do. Do the likes and the subscribes and the shares and the, the comments and the stuff, because apparently that's what you're supposed to say on YouTube. So there it is. Have a good one. I'd like to take this opportunity. Thank, thank you, Casey Liddell, for allowing me to use your video in uh, explaining of the way how YouTube channel works. Now back to the manifold project. This video will be longer, probably one of the longest ones I've ever made and posted. Okay, well I've wiped that half of the manifold off, wiped this half of there. The next stage is to lay this out here and take our two water jackets out to begin with. Lay this here. Come on, let's see which hole goes where. These are two 
water hoses here and we have vacuum hoses here and oh boy from where I remember I'm being hidden and of course I did so much editing and cutting of the video out they couldn't see where it was so hmm I wonder see that comes through there on this side here approximately put this in perspective as to where it goes that's the reason I can not put the gasket on so don't damage it in trying to figure this plumber's nightmare out I wonder if my Hayes manual has this year marked in it let's have a look here now here's the reason these manuals are not 100% up to date even though it says 1975 through to 87 it only gives you a guideline but with this manual I found out a couple of things already it doesn't have the later edition of 87 in here but it still gives you enough reference points that one can look up. We want the section on. Okay, here's a good example right here on the distributor. This is the old type system here with the old type modular box. Well, this car is nothing to that. And the only reference to that is this page here which does not show the module unless it's that there or yeah it says module which is that there but it's not 100% accurate but like I said it gives you a rough idea I guess get out of the hot, hot sun here well of course not one page in that manual shows this system. Now whoops my video I cut all the portion out of where all these back hoses came from. So I remember taking some pictures before I started. They're still on the camera. I'm gonna shut this camera off and look for those pictures. See if I got enough to give me a guideline where the hoses were. I figured out this hose does go here. This hose are the teeth. These two hoses are the puzzler right at this moment. We have this bracket we got bolt on for our accelerator pedal and cruise control. Or I shouldn't say, no, this doesn't have cruise control. Uh, but sometimes I wish it did. This is another reason too, where age is against me, called memory loss. The older you get, the easier it is to forget. And that's another reason it takes me so much longer now in doing something because just scratch the old brain well. Where did this come from? How was this done? I think this is going to be the last, last job I ever do on an engine. And as I said in my previous videos, especially my last, I promised I would finish this car in post. I want to round it off so that it's 110 videos in total. So I may just make one more video after this on the old boat. And that video will be on the framework. It's going to be a long time after that before I post the game. And I don't see those numbers climbing whatsoever. An example, that last video I just posted the other day, in one day, only one view. That hurts. Tells me everything I need to know. Well, that's just lovely. Accidentally, I deleted all those darn pictures. So, the only choice I have here, I just laid the manifold down here and see what lines up to where. Well, I did find so far where the two mini heater hoses went to. So, what I've been thinking, okay, seeing I'm in this issue, is let's just bolt this thing down and see if I can't wiggle my hand in there somehow trying to lay this out after getting everything laid to approximately where they should be going and go from there. 
So before I can do that, I'm going to prep the uh, gasket. Now that we got this figured out, this portion, this is the worst portion to figure out. And for this time I'm going to lay it to the side here. This is where it's hard on my back now. It's stretching to lift this up. And with that finger right there, I got that sore is getting worse, and I can hardly put a grip on it. Yeah, it would be nice if I could lift it straight up, but I can't. Ah. Oh, mercy! Ah, damn, that hurts. Now let's get the gasket, which is right here. We're gonna dust off. Which way did this go on here? goes on I see one way. Hmm. You get it yet. Yeah. How about this way? Okay, so that tells me direction. Okay, now this is how to make it seal. We grab the old aluminum and paint and we coat this gasket. do this before. Okay, we'll set that on here. Now comes the tricky part. Let's pull this number one wire off for it right now. Soon as I don't catch it. Because of my back condition, you know how hard it was getting for me getting that off, lifting it off. I'm getting me a couple of bolts here that I can use as a dowel pin. Okay, so that's the thread we're after. See what I can find. So I've got me a couple of dolls here. Now how I made these dolls is I just took the head of the bolt, a couple of bolts, ground them off, taper this end off a bit, and now we'll put one on each corner here, and it also, with a little height, it gives me a guideline. So we can get it without moving this gasket and help me with assisting to get it on and in place especially with this awkward position I'm in uh, which is very awkward and very hard on my back just like that now you can just unscrew the doll pins with your fingers. With those doll pins in place, now I've got it sitting where I can figure all the vacuum hoses out. And we still got this throttle cable bracket to put on here too, so another reason I didn't want to bolt it all the way down. And already I'm running into issues wearing in the road. I pity the new new mechanics these days with the vehicles getting worse and worse every year to work on. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Get it back there now to get it into, into place. You feel your way around everything. I hate when you cannot see what you are doing. I, I just totally hate it. Got it. Okay. Well, we now now know where these two hoses go. Let's put them on. Okay, we have got to change that clamp so it's on the other side. Yeah. If it isn't one thing, it's another. Okay, so we want the head of the clamp this side with this bottom one. And I see we got a problem with that clamp. I have to replace it. But I think I might have one. Notice I said, think. We have one here. Perfect. For the two nuts that came off of the throttle bracket. And cruise control. What I meant to say was stick down linkage. Oh yeah, we have this second bracket here. This bracket helped the uh, uh okay I'm 
remember it holding two of the uh, connections down here. Uh, which side did it come from? It would be easy, so easy if one could hook all these connections up with the saw instead of being on. But they make everything so virtually hard to do. Got to come up with some kind of plan here. Access it easier. I said it before and I'll say it again. Damn engineers don't give a damn about how it is to the mechanic. And everything is put on before the body goes on. You damn near have to take the body off just to achieve. Any work to done. Well, that hose looks like it's got to go there. This hose does look like it goes there. Uh, now it's dark, but I can't see in that corner. Said it before and I'll say it again. I'm sure glad I hung my toolbox up in 1982. Well, at this point, it's starting to drop things right, left, and center. My back is bothering me. Lifting that thing on, on to there, getting it to that position. I gotta take a break here. Uh, I don't know if I'll get back to it or not, but I gotta stop now. Well, I was hoping to get the whole thing, in the two portions, into this one clip. It's going to be way, way too long for one video, so I'm going to have to s split it here. Much as I did not want to, but looking at the timepiece here, 19 minutes, 8 minutes, 7 minutes, 19 minutes, 19, 19, it's 18, 20, 38, so it's over three hours of footage yet to still go through and running into one problem after another after another seems there's no end so I'm going to say once again thank you Casey Liddell for allowing me to use the footage of your YouTube explanation and we're going to continue this because I did run into more problems from where I left off here so like I said I don't want to make a three hour video <laughs> so we'll say thank you for watching please do subscribe please do like please 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 comment we'll catch you on the next one adios Thank <laughs> you.